So I did not complain. But there will there will be a lot of people, and I have known some of them in CIMB. But the moment they are promoted, they're given a, a higher a higher responsibility and accountability, they demand the upgrading as well. Okay. So the moment you demand means that there is you're not putting your organization in front of your interest. All right. So and when i when i have to build that, my my team i hired everyone that are more experienced than me at that point of time i was the youngest in my own division i was the head of division but everyone else was uh, early 40s or late 40s right. and i paid them more than i i was paid You must never ever think that your staff should be paid less than you. You must always pay them more than you because you hire them for capabilities that you do not have. If not, you don't need the staff. You can do it yourself. Right? Always remember that. So. No matter how great you are, you think you are, there will always be certain things that you are not as good as the other person. Alright, so that 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 puts you, it pulls you down to earth, lah. Yeah. Then you don't think that you are hero and Superman, ke apa yeah. okay. There are two things here. One is misreporting. The other is. Um, regulatory framework right? what is happening in the GCC uh, in terms of the default is a default across the board right? both conventional instruments as well as Islamic instruments and the majority of the default is conventional right? the unfortunate thing is when, when, when the media reported it the media reported it as if the core default is in the Islamic financial market or Islamic capital market. And the reason why they concentrate on that one is because for the first time, Islamic bonds are defaulting. Okay. But the amount is insignificant to the conventional default. All right? Always remember that. But because it's the first time, and so it becomes more newsworthy Okay. It attracts more attention Therefore they put it as a uh, headline okay. So The issue Is not the default The issue Is The regulatory framework In Dubai Or in the GCC as a whole In respect of uh, The ability Of investors Enforcing their rights there was no bankruptcy law in Dubai. Right? I can't, I can't go and sue somebody and make them a bankrupt, and so that all their income is goes under reservation and reservation comes and pay me first. You know that kind of stuff. So, if you have those transactions and it's done in Malaysia, we don't have a similar issue. There has been default in the Malaysian Islamic capital market from the day we started in 1990. All right. It's not, not a big issue It's a I mean it's a normal Occurrence In a mature Islamic financial market Or financial market in general It default I just go and do a uh, Bondholders meeting And we decide majority or whatever uh, Two third majority to apa, Call default And Sell the assets and whatever not Right? If I cannot do that, then I can just sue in the, in the court and I get my judgment. Right? So the process is very clear in Malaysia. Uh, but in the GCC, it's not that clear because the regulatory framework is incomplete. All right? And therefore, it becomes such a big hoo-ha in that market. And as far as our business is concerned, there's no impact. I mean, we did, we did the government of Malaysia, Suku. Um, at the height of the sovereign uh, credit crisis. Mm. 
So the the, the sukuk was well received and oversubscribed and everything was is fine. So and we have many other deals in the pipeline that we're going to come up with. So um, you need to look at it from those perspectives. Islamic finance at this moment in time is very, very small. Uh, globally, it's just small. Right? But we must always remember that, touching a little bit on Sukuk first, the Euro bond, the conventional bond, when it was first introduced, <laughs> took 10 years, 10 years to surpass the $10 billion mark. Right, the euro bond so the suku surpassed the 10 billion mark in 3 years right. that's how fast the suku market is growing as compared to the conventional bond market when it was first introduced a long time ago alright share of Islamic banking is still very small globally because right? mind you in the modern financial market Islamic finance is only about 40 years old conventional finance is more than 200 years old right? so they have had a head start so to expect Islamic finance to gain market share within a period of 30 years, 40 years to come near where conventional finance is today I mean, it's a bit unfair lah. Right? it's a bit unfair to see to want to demand that market share to grow that fast right? but it is growing fast right? and in Malaysia for example, Islamic banking is now 20% of total banking asset. Capital market is more 60% of total corporate, uh, outstanding corporate bonds. Right? So these are good statistics. I foresee in the next five years, share of market in the Islamic banking sector uh, will be 50% of total banking sector. Uh, if if the trajectory of growth that we are seeing today continues right? in Malaysia, in Malaysia right? globally you can't really to me to me I couldn't care less about what happens globally because for as long as they do not have regulation there's no point talking about growth because whatever that is growing out there outside of regulatory framework is uncertain and dangerous okay and and to me if we push for the growth without the regulation in place it will fail there will be a collapse in the market i mean dubai islamic bank went bankrupt three times kuwait finance house went bankrupt twice of course, over there, not here. All right. Kuwait Finance House was forced to be regulated by the Kuwait regulator because they were operating outside of the banking industry. All right. and, and, and customers lost their, basically lost their life All right. because the activities were done outside of regulation. So we do not want Islamic finance to grow outside of banking regulation because it's dangerous to the public and it's dangerous to the country that is doing Islamic finance. Right? So that's, that's important. So we must concentrate each jurisdiction, develop their, their regulation, and then as the regulation is there, you see, and, and you, only then do you start pushing for growth. Okay? So that's why CIMB Islamic today concentrate in Malaysia, Indonesia, Brunei, Singapore, and eventually Thailand because these are the countries that is putting in place the appropriate regulation.